Hello everybody, season 4, episode 24, the 2-4 episode, <laughs> live on the air, Green Effect podcast. Alright, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. We had a really fascinating week, and there's a lot of stuff we can chat about here because, I mean, if things weren't screwed up, screwed up enough, like, more shit's going sideways, and I want to break it down for everybody because... I know what I put out on my social media. I know what others put out on their social media. And sometimes it's good just to kind of break it down a little bit as to what is actually going on. Okay. Um, first of all, I see yeah, I'm doing the whole half goatee, half beard thing. I, I got some comments last time around about the uh, the beard. I won't lie. I've just, I have actually like legit been busy. <laughs> and um, I just, I haven't had time to shave my whole face. I'm just doing the under part, the older man under part here. So it looks like I'm waking up and grooming myself. But after that, I don't know, this might disappear. We'll wait till the wife gets frustrated and then get rid of it then. But anyway, had some comments, thought I would talk about that briefly. And for those of you who are not uh, watching on YouTube, please, I encourage you watch on YouTube quickly so you can see what I look like. All right, let's get into what's going on, and as you guys know, you'll get a bit of my side view if you're watching on YouTube, because I'm uh, reading off my screen a bit here with my notes. So, oh brother, where do I even start? Okay, so, Justin Trudeau, liberal government, uh, I, where, I, I don't even know where to begin with this shit show. Same with Ontario government. Okay, so... What is happening? And I posted about this on social media. Basically, they're they're cutting the GST, okay, for like two months. We're giving you a tax holiday, GST, all right? Not the HST, but the GST. As far as I know, it's just the GST. Please, someone correct me if I'm wrong, and it's the HST as well, okay? Don't forget, HST is the harmonized sales tax. That's a combination of provincial and federal, okay? So GST, I believe, is like 7%. And in Ontario, PST is 8%. So HST comes up to 15%. All right. For those of you who are listening from not inside Ontario, yes, we pay 15% on most of our goods. All right. Americans will find that crazy because a lot of states don't charge tax on food or, or certain types of food. Right. So, nope, not here in Canada, baby. We'd be paying taxes on freaking everything. All right. So, basically... We are going to get a GST holiday from December 14th-ish ish, until about mid-February. And it's going to be pretty much on everything, all right? So just to read off a little bit here, you know, restaurant meals, children's clothing, video games, uh, some types of alcohol, right, I'm sure, right? Oh, I'm going to sneeze. <sighs> oh, pardon me. I'm not even going to mute that out. We'll keep it authentic and I'll just sneeze right into the microphone. So we're getting a GST holiday. And the, the whole, his whole thing is Canadians are suffering, right? We got to try to, we, we got to try to help Canadians get through this tough time. That's not what it is. All right. Let me break down what our little GST holiday is going to mean. Whenever you give out money. And by exempting GST, you're basically creating inflation a little bit. People are going to go spend. And you got to remember something. I, again, I have posted this. Overall, the Canadians have spent less on cost of goods. A lot less. And that's usually the first thing to go, right? You know you're going into a recession when Canadians stop buying clothing. When they stop going to restaurants, we know this is all down in the dumps. So what do you do if you're the federal government? Hey, let's give some people some money. Let's go spend, right? We know consumer solvencies are up. We know business insolvencies are way up, like way, like a really, really high. Okay. Um, we know all that. So what does the government do? Hey, let's give people a tax break. Go spend more money. My my alcohol cabinet could be could be refilled a little bit because, quite frankly, it gets used a little bit. All right. But let's keep going down the road of what this is actually going to mean. So, again, 
We're going to prop up the economy, probably create inflation. I hate to break it to everybody. If, in, if, if inflation begins to increase, I don't know by how much, but we've already got very, very low odds of a 50 bip drop in December. We were, we, 50 bips was almost a lock in December. And another 50 bips, I think January, February, whenever the next one is after that. Now, 25. Like, we're not getting 50. It's not going to happen unless something insane comes out. We're not getting 50 basis point drop. Why would they? We got GST rebates or sorry, GST exempt coming up, right? And we got the Ontario government giving out 200 bucks to everybody. And then just for the last, these things happen in threes. Apparently the liberal government's giving me another 250 in the spring. If you make under 150,000 and you follow a bunch of the other rules, like 18 million Canadians are getting another 250 because it's because times are tough, right? It's kind of like I've used this analogy before. You're hitting yourself on the head and you go to the doctor and you keep hitting yourself on the head and you're like, hey, doctor, uh, my head really hurts. I don't know why. As you're pounding yourself against the head with a frying pan. I got some new. And here's the other thing. Guys, let's not forget this. We're giving out money to people. We're, we're, we're not charging GST. We don't have the money to give. We're in a deficit. We owe, the government owes gazillions of dollars. I'm sorry. Where is this coming from? Oh, right. We're going to pay for it. This is, guys, this is genius. Here's your GST holiday. Here's 250 bucks. I know what he's saying. Disney Plus lady, Psst, Christia, God, give them the money. We're just going to collect it back anyway. Don't worry about it. They're going to feel great about this. Maybe they'll elect us back. Probably not. But this is going to be so good. Come on, guys. Really, what are we doing here? Are we just giving out money just to give out money? It's exactly what we're doing. We don't have money to give out, but we're giving it out. This is, this is crap. <laughs> this is stupid. Do I enjoy the money? Absolutely. Will I enjoy GST reduction? Absolutely I will. But don't enjoy it for long. They're all going to get it back. They're going to jack up taxes. We got a carbon tax increase coming. Guys, this is, what is it? A wolf in sheep's clothing. Don't fall for this shit. Don't. This is crap. Like this is, this is, for those of you who are Ontario, or who are in Ontario, this is Kathleen Wynne 2.0, right here, right now. It is the liberal mo, and it's it's garbage. It's absolute garbage. Maybe we should really refocus some of that money, and put it towards housing. I don't know. Call me crazy, whatever. But this is going to be. This is it's, it's stupid. It's, it's stupid and it's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. It's not good. There's more stats around this. But again, it's going to be at the it's going to be at the sacrifice of future generations, future governments. Like what are we doing here? You know. All right, what's the next problem to deal with? Crap, I had it up here where's it gone? Oh, all right. <sighs> Switch gears a little bit. Stress test policy change. All right. So me, along with everybody else, we're all excited as mortgage brokers and agents. Okay. We're all excited. Let me break down. You're hearing all over social media and in the regular media. For those of you still watch TV, for cable, um, there's, does anyone, does anyone still watch? Does anyone still have cable? My in-laws have cable, but they're like over 60. My mom still has cable. She's over 60 for sure. Uh, all right. Let me break this down. So you're seeing all over social media. All right. You can now switch your mortgage with no stress test. We're all excited. Every social media outlet stoked. I'm excited. But <laughs> like everything else, here's the good news. That's the good news. Here's the real maybe kind of bad news. Okay. And there's still some clarity coming out. Believe it or not, we don't have complete clarity. And as you guys know, I follow research, or I, I follow information, research from insiders. Like I, I, I'm following this story, but we're not done yet. 
All right. What this means is, and this is very important, if you have your mortgage, let's say at RBC, and you don't need any more money. That's the key thing here. You don't need any additional funds. It's a straight switch, and that's a big difference here. If you need more money, you want to add a HELOC, uh, consolidate some debt, etc., this doesn't apply to you. You still got to requalify at the stress test, okay, with the contract rate plus 2%. There's just no change there. You're asking the bank for more money than what you have or what you've been, what you borrowed. They're going to requalify the whole mortgage. It's very, very simple. What this is for is this is for folks who have an existing mortgage. All right. Just a regular mortgage. There, there's some caveats there, but we'll just say an existing mortgage. And they don't need any extra money. Just we're good. We don't need consolidated debt. There's no strategies we need. We just need, we just need that we have this mortgage. Well, in the past, what would end up happening is they would look around and maybe because the stress test was in place, it maybe prevented them from switching to another bank. And I mean a straight switch, straight switch. Well, now they've eliminated that. And they basically said, look, you've been paying your mortgage, you're in good standing, you don't need any extra money. Let's give you a bit of an advantage here. And you can actually switch your mortgage from one bank to another with no stress test. Huge for competition. That's great news. Until the, until the fine print came out this week, okay? Until the fine print came out this week. And then we realized, hmm, good news for sure. But here again is the issue. So we're waiting for clarity. But from what we understand, this whole rule is only for federally regulated banks. So the big six, basically, including National Bank and that group. But apparently, OSFI, the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, who basically babysits all lending in the country, is saying that uh, monoline lenders, for those of you who don't know what monoline is, it's mono, one, they do one thing, they just offer mortgages. They're huge, they're great, they're awesome. They keep the banks in check a little bit with competition, so it's good to have them. And but they're saying they're not eligible for this. So First National, CMLS, MCAP, who else do we use? Equitable. Um, there's a whole bunch. It just Oh, and then Canada's 392 credit unions and, and case populaires, if you're in, in Quebec. They're just simply not eligible for this. They still have to apply and get it done at the stress test level. Okay. Crazy. So again, here's a great rule. And now here's the other issue. You can't have it this way. Now, there's another little problem with this. This can only be done at your maturity date. So if you want to do this midway through, let's say rates have dropped considerably, and now you want to break the mortgage, pay the penalty out of your pocket, whatever, right? Because most penalties right now are only three months interest anyway. If you want to do that, you can't. Got to wait till maturity. Can't do it midterm. Okay, you can do it, but you got to qualify at the contract plus two, which is the stress test level. Now, big, big freaking picture. Okay. Is this going to light our market on fire? Even if it was every bank, it kind of really isn't anyway. If I can just go from complete excitement and good news, to here's all the bad news, to here's the reality, okay? Because here's the thing. Most clients are refinancing anyway, all right? And I will say this, existing lenders are truly being competitive with rates, which they should be. You're their damn bank. Right. So we see banks like RBC, TD in particular, Scotia, they're being super competitive with their renewal rates. So if you do need to do a straight switch, sometimes it doesn't even make sense because they're giving you a really good rate. And, and again, so they should. Absolutely, they should. You're their damn bank. They've, they've had you for this many years. So is this, again, is this going to light the world on fire? 
or like completely stifle it. It's not going to do much, guys. This is not, this is something I'm going to post on social media that's exciting. In my humble opinion, it will help a little bit. Um, I did a funny post this week about, you know, all the customers I'm going to help because they can now be competitive. Yeah, it's okay. It's going to help. There'll be some we do. Uh, but again, this is not earth shattering because that's a thing too. Like for us, you know, as, as I know with our team, we're not just order takers. We institute strategies, uh, cascading strategy, rate tracker, penalty pro. Like we have, we have so many strategies that it probably doesn't even make sense to do a straight switch. You want to add a HELOC to give yourself some interest rate protection. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there, right? So anyway. This is not earth shattering. Holy crap. The world's going to be amazing now. It's just not. All right. Okay. Moving along. Let's talk about the market because the market is another gong show. So, <laughs> knock on wood, I know we have been very busy, right? We're very much in tune with our realtor partners and we know we hear what's happening. And what we're starting to see right now is we're starting to see a lot of first-time homebuyers come off the bench and actually get into the game, all right? I'm going to guess it's consumer sentiment. We've, I talk a lot about it on social media. Like, consumer sentiment in Canada is huge. If we're feeling good, if we're hearing rates are coming down, if we're hearing some movement in penthouse prices, here we go, right? Let's see what we can afford. And these people are finding homes, which is really, really cool to hear, okay? Um, the other part of that is we've got the rule change coming on the 15th of December, where if you have less than 20% down and you are a first time home buyer, you can get that 30 year amortization. Now we don't know yet what the premium increase is going to be on that. There will be for sure, but that's coming. That will impact the market immediately. Now, December 15th, you know, Christmas is coming. It'll probably be a delayed reaction till January. But we are definitely seeing more buyers ask questions and trying to get pre-approved. That is happening 100%. We see it happening. Okay. So, so that's a big thing that we're tracking. As for rates. All right. Let me talk about rates, guys. Here's what we're starting to see. We had one major lender drop rates this week. I don't know how long that's going to last. Because as the bond prices increase with Trump coming out with all those little announcements, we might see rates start to rise. And as the government gives out, let's call it CERB, it's CERB, guys, tax-free 250, this is basically CERB all over again. As we're jacking money into the economy, we're probably going to see... GDP increase and inflation increase. Well, guess what? That's going to impact rates, prime rates, the whole bit. So have we hit the floor on fixed rates? We're pretty damn close. I won't lie. We are pretty damn close, right? We might have a little bit more to go. Man, but if this federal, if the governments keep giving us money to spend, we're going to spend it. Like, we're going to spend it on food. And other stuff. Especially around Christmas. GST. I'll tell you right now. I'm going out and stocking up. Why not? It's like a 7% off sale. We'll see how the cost of goods goes. Right? A retailer is going to get smart. Say, all right, let's increase our price to offset the 7%. These guys are all getting back. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, those are things we're following. So anyway, I hope that helped a little bit. That just kind of breaks down what we're seeing all right the new again the stuff the federal government came out with um the rule change is kind of a half-ass rule change to be honest uh, oh i, I want to throw this out as well since i since i have everybody right now i'm not posting this on social media but it's been posted be very careful what you see on social media be very careful there's a post making its rounds right now I'm just reading it. I'm not going to post it, but I'm just going to show, I'm just going to talk about it. Real estate agent in Stony Creek, beautiful area, Stony Creek, does a dance in front of a house and, it, and I'll read it, whatever, 
Oh, it's actually got the address too. Wow, this makes it even worse. She's basically doing a dance, saying, just in front of the house, just secured, cash flow positive, $875,000 mortgage. She got 10% as a down payment. Rented. 2700 plus 2200 equals 4900 Now, where do I begin with making sure, careful what you read? So, the really sad part is, okay, so that's great. We got up on social media that you've committed mortgage fraud. Fantastic. Because you can't buy a rental with less than 20% down. So that's great. And you put up the address. Fantastic. It's a corner detached home in Stony Creek. Um. Okay, great. So the mortgage fraud, I really hope a lender gets a hold of this and does a quick search. And hopefully this property, they have financed so they can call the mortgage because it's this is shit. And something else, that rental income doesn't really cover the mortgage. <laughs> it's like, well, it covers the mortgage, but the property tax, the utilities, they might be paying the utilities, but if it's a two unit, probably not. Maintenance, bad debt. She makes it sound like she's getting a thousand bucks a month in cash flow. I got news for you. You're not. All right. So just be very careful with what you see. I'm pretty sure you could probably do a Google search and find this property. Just search Stony Creek, corner detached, just secure cash flow positive. And this was posted by a real estate agent dancing in front of the house. This is what completely screws up our industry. Shit like that. On that note, let's call it a day. All right. Questions, comments, concerns. Reach out to me. Love to chat. Please, a five-star review would be really helpful. Like me, love me, follow me, desire me, whatever. And uh, until next time, talk to you soon.